what I would kindly ask all of you, including them, you, and these teachers over there, to stand up, lose the chairs, as a short activity in the beginning. Do you guys know what is a trajectory? Who knows? What is a trajectory? Can you explain what is a trajectory? A trajectory is a path which some object which is going in some direction is taking. Okay, cool. So, in other words, trajectory is a fancy word for a path. Do you know what is a path? To time. Okay? So, what I propose is that we play a game with this ball that we form a path, a trajectory, so that every person inside of this circle is going to touch a ball only once. So let's form a trajectory, okay? I'm starting. So you don't have to, I'm using my hands like this, and you throw it to somebody else. And you remember to whom you're throwing it to and to who, from whom you're get, receiving it from, okay? Cross your arms, that's it. Okay? I mean, everybody has to touch the ball only once. <laughs> okay, so, sorry. Uh, one thing, you're not allowed to give it to your neighbors. But let's do it faster, okay? So, the same path. You give it to the same person and you receive it from the same person, okay? Let's go. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Don't drop the ball. So what I want to talk to you about tonight um, is, is how we can explore space with your computer. So um, there's, there's many ways to get involved in space and uh, some of them are very expensive and hard, uh, like launching a space shuttle. Um, we can't do that tonight, but I'm, I want to show you tonight some ways that you can get involved in space that are very cheap and you can do on your home computer, uh, and you haven't even got to get out of your lounge room to get involved in space, out of your living room. So, um, as Boyan says, space is a very serious business, and uh, people in the space industry actually spend a lot of time doing simulations of space flight before they are ready to launch. And the idea there is that the simulation, it's only on a computer and you can actually make a mistake and you can learn from that mistake and then apply that so that when you go to actually do the real mission that you don't have these problems like what we dropped the balls before on the floor, um, we don't have those issues because we've practiced everything. Um, to, to actually launch a rocket into space is very expensive and you only, you only want to do it once. You can't afford to come back and do it ten times because you haven't practiced. So, uh, simulation is very important. Um, just, I want to tell you a little bit about myself so that you understand my background. Um, I'm an electrical engineer uh, and I didn't start out getting involved in space. Um, I, I started out about uh, 12 years ago, I was lent a telescope by a friend of mine and I started looking at the stars in the sky and exploring space from my backyard. Uh, and at that time, the International Space Station was under construction. Has everyone heard of the International Space Station? Anyone heard of that? So the International Space Station is a big um, space station, like a, like a home. Um, it's got about as much volume as, say, a three-bedroom apartment. Um, and it's actually orbiting Earth. It's 400 kilometres above the Earth. And it goes once around the Earth every 90 minutes. Anyway, they were building that. Um, 10 or 11 years ago, and it was starting to get bright enough that you could see it go over this, uh, over the sky at night time, just after sunset. And so I started to get interested in how they're building this massive construction in, in, in space. You can imagine you can't just, you couldn't just get a home and put it on a rocket and launch it into space, right? It's too big. Uh, so I, I started to get interested in how they, how they would actually build that and um, take all the modules, join them together. Um, they, they were doing a lot of space shuttle flights at the time to do that, so they would, they would take basically one room up in the space shuttle, they would fly it up, and they would 
joined it onto the other module that was in space. So they started with one, then they ended up, with, they got to two, and then three modules, they added solar panels, so on. Uh, and eventually it became big enough for us to see. And at, it, at night now, it's one of the brightest things in the sky. Anyway, so they were doing lots of space shuttle flights. And in 2003, uh, this, this happened. This is the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. So as the Space Shuttle was re-entering Earth's atmosphere, um, it had a fault on the wing that caused it to burn up and to disintegrate. And all the astronauts on board were killed. There were seven astronauts on board. And it was a terrible tragedy, um, both for, uh, you, you know, for a terrible tragedy for, for the families, but also for all the engineers and the people working at, at NASA and the International Space Centres uh, who had gotten to know these astronauts very well. Uh, so so I, I was interested in, in how they were actually going to get the space shuttle back into space because they needed to keep building the space station. Uh, and they were trying to work out ways to make it safer so that a disaster like that wouldn't happen again. Uh, so one of the things that they decided that they were going to do is this. Um, this is actually the space shuttle approaching the International Space Station. You can see, thanks Rob. You can see in the payload bay of the space shuttle there, you can see one of the modules which is going to be added to the space station. So what they did is, uh, is they wanted to have a look at the wings at, as the space shuttle floats approach the space station and see if there was any problems, anything had been damaged uh, and then they could decide whether it was safe to re-enter or whether they had to send up another mission to rescue the astronauts. Uh, so what, what the space shuttle did is it, it, would, it would come underneath the, sp the space station and it would do this backflip. You can see as you go along here, it gradually flips over backwards and then that way they could see the whole wing, right, the, both the top and the bottom of the wing. And they took lots of photos and would send them down to the Earth. And they would analyse them and see if there was an issue. But um, what, what really got me interested about this was that to have these two massive objects, the, spa the space shuttle weighs about uh, 25,000 kilograms, um, about the same weight as 25 cars. The International Space Station was hundreds of tons, so um, the uh, and they're moving through space at seven, around about 7,700 kilometres per second, okay, or around about 25,000 kilometres per hour, per hour, very fast. So what I was curious about is how they actually got these two massive objects that are moving so fast to do this delicate dance. Um, so I went off and did some investigation and I found some software I could actually simulate this for myself. I could simulate the launch, take it into space, um, do the backflip and see how that actually worked. It's actually very, very complicated. Um, but what I, what I want to do tonight is, is not actually simulate that with you, um, but I wanted, I wanted to introduce some software to you that you can use to simulate that and just show you some of the, the basics of that software and um, we hopefully we can learn a little bit of science at the same time we'll learn a little bit about how orbits or trajectories work how the trajectories of spacecraft work uh, and we'll have hopefully have some fun as well so uh, this uh, sorry can you just grab the light there Rob? Yeah. this is the software that we're going to be using tonight which is the orbiter space flight simulator um, it's, it uses real physics, so it work, everything inside that software works the same way as it does in the real world. Um, but I'll, I'll just sort of touch on a few other uh, bits of software that you can use as well. And if anyone's got any questions about these later or wants to learn more about them, then I'm happy to talk about that. Um, there's another program called Kerbal Space Pro Program. It's a good one. You can get a free demonstration from the internet for that. And in the handouts on your table there, there's links to download this software. Uh, it's, it's a little bit easier to use than Orbiter, so if you want to go home and try one without any help, that's a good place to start. Um, you, can, you can fly spaceships around, you can build space stations, um, all those sorts of things. Uh, the, the other one which is worth mentioning is this Worldwide Telescope. 
Um, I mentioned before about my friend giving me a telescope to use. Uh, the World Wide Telescope is great because on cloudy nights when you can't see the stars, you can actually sit down at your computer and use it like a virtual telescope. Um, it's got a whole map of the sky in there, you can see all sorts of different imagery. You can see imagery from the Hubble Space Telescope. Has anyone heard of that one? It's a very big telescope which we've got in space and delivers very, very sharp images of the stars and galaxy. Um, and it's also got images in there from X-ray telescopes to help us see black holes and all sorts of interesting things. So that's uh, worth a look on a cloudy night when you can't see the stars out in your backyard. The other one is Celestia. Uh, Celestia is a, a simulation of the whole universe and you can actually fly around anywhere in the universe and observe what's going on. Um, one of the things that I really like doing in Celestia is uh, Jupiter, the planet Jupiter. Does anyone know how many moons Jupiter has got? Anyone? Have a guess? Yeah, it's about that. About 60. Um, but the uh, there's four really bright moons that you can actually observe with a telescope from Earth. You can actually go into Celestia and look at where those moons are going around Jupiter and then go out into your backyard with a telescope or a good pair of binoculars and actually see those moons in the same place where the program is telling you that they are. So that's, that's very useful as well. Alright, so what, what we might do is um, we'll go into orbit up and we'll start our first experiment. Um, what this experiment is all about is uh, we've actually got a satellite, a spacecraft, in what we call a geosynchronous orbit. Now what that geosynchronous orbit is, is where a lot of the communications satellites sit. It's uh, around about 37,000 kilom uh, 37, kilometres from Earth and it's got some properties which we're going to learn about that are very useful for communications spacecraft. So what I'll get you to do is, you've, you've all got Orbiter on your screen, I'll get you to click on the scenario there which is called uh, Tiggs and you should, you should come up with a image of the Earth. Yeah, right, if, you need some help. if you need some help just put up your hand and we can come around and help you. Right. So what, what you should have on your screen there is a picture of the Earth. Now, that, that picture of the Earth is, is actually an image of what the Earth looks like from the sun. And it's actually simulated it tomorrow morning, I said, to take two. So that's what the Earth is going to look like from the sun tomorrow morning. What I'd like you to do is if you press the, the T key on your keyboard, it'll actually speed up time. Yes. And, you'll, and then click the preset button on the right hand side. Preset. Yes. Stellar trick. Yep. And so if you highlight the first one, which is called Stellar Track. Yep. Double click that. And you'll. Uh, okay. Something you'll. Yeah, that's it. That's it. The circle what? in the middle is actually the Earth. Okay? The green circle on the outside is the trajectory of your space. You'll notice on your screen there's two circles. Okay? One circle on the left shows where your spaceship is going around the Earth. The other circle on the right shows where the moon is around the Earth. So you can see that your spaceship at the moment is heading pretty much across, across the screen to the left. And you can see the, the moon is heading down the screen, off the bottom of the screen. If you were to speed up your spaceship off the screen to the left, who thinks it would end up at the moon? Three or four That's it, perfect. But right now they have to restart. Yeah, restart. And try. For yourself and just have a play around and explore space yourself. And let your imagination 
um, just guide you to wherever you want to go. All right, so thanks very much for your time. Um, it's been a real pleasure to, to be here and, and see you start to explore space. Uh, and I've, I've really enjoyed it. I hope you guys have enjoyed it too and that you've learned something from it. All right, so thank you very much. Thank you.